Okay, in this screencast, I'm just going to show you how to set up a few problems in uh, Mastering Physics that are a little different than what we've done in class before. So I want to give you an idea of how to approach them. A lot of them are involving two different objects, in this case two blocks, that are connected by a string. And the, as we've see, seen in class, the tension in a string, as long as in this case the pulley is massless and frictionless, the tension in a string can uh, is the same throughout the length of the string. If the pulley had a mass um, or if there was any friction in the pulley, that would allow the tension to be different at different points in the string because the pulley would resist rotating. If it's free to rotate and it doesn't ca uh, need any force to start rotating because it's massless, that allows the tension in the string to be the same throughout. So if you know the tension in this part of the string down here, it's going to be the same up here. Uh, as well, uh, you're going to draw two separate force diagrams, one for object B to solve for the tension in this problem because it's moving at constant speed, and then a second force diagram for object A and relate the tension in the string up here to the tension that you found down here when you drew a force diagram of object B. So that will make this problem uh, a pretty straightforward problem. I don't think you'll have too much problem with this one. The one that's a little more involved I want to talk about um, in a little more depth, and that is the one here where the two blocks are on an angle. In this problem, um, you've got uh, M1, you know the mass, you know this angle here, theta is 30 degrees, you know the coefficient of kinetic friction, we're going to assume is what they give you. They don't tell you it's mu k, but since there's motion here, this is accelerating up the ramp, we'll, we'll assume it's kinetic friction because it basically has to be because there's motion. Um, they talk about it here, in fact, kinetic friction. So um, the two things you need to remember, one is, as I mentioned before, the tension in the string is constant throughout. And the second thing is that the acceleration of block M2 up the ramp is the same as the acceleration of block M1 down because uh, there's no stretching in the rope or anything like that. So uh, the accelerations are identical. So you can relate those two across the two different objects. Um, last thing again, draw two separate force diagrams of M1 and M2. I've got this kind of sketched out here. Um, I show you here the tension in the rope here is the same as the tension in the rope here. I've just started to show you that there's going to be a force diagram over here of M1. You know, it's going to have the uh, force of the earth on M1 here, and you're going to have the force of tension, the tension in the rope, going this way. Keep in mind that because this is like an elevator that's accelerating as it descends, the tension in the rope is going to be different than the force of the earth on the block. Okay, so you notice I've drawn it a little bit shorter. There's an acceleration in the downward direction, so what you're going to do is uh, find the unbalanced force here. You're not going to be able to solve for it because you don't have enough information here. You don't know the tension. But you're going to create an equation for the unbalanced force on block M1 using our formula A equals F unbalanced. I'll just use a U over M, which is the same as FU equals MA. That's not so cool, is it? Uh, F <laughs> unbalanced equals M times A. Glad I got that. Um, F unbalanced equals M times A. So uh, the unbalanced force is just going to be the difference between the Earth's pull on the block and tension. Again, you're not going to be able to solve it yet because you don't know what the tension in the rope is. But once you create an equation for M2, in this direction, using your force diagram, obviously the tension is pulling this way. You're going to have the force of the earth on the block straight down. You're going to have your normal force. You also have friction. Don't forget you've got friction between block M2 and the ramp. So you're going to have to uh, draw uh, on your force diagram a vector for friction in the correct direction. Make sure that when you set, in this case, I have F unbalanced equal to M times A, that um, since acceleration is in this downward direction here, that was my acceleration arrow, I forgot to label it, um, that uh, I want to call my acceleration, um, I want to make sure my signs are all straight. So whatever sign I use for the force of the earth on the block, I have to make sure that I use the same sign for acceleration. So if I call this positive, 
FEB, then A is going to be positive on this side of the equation. So just be consistent with your signs. I guess that's my, my uh, advice. Uh, same thing here. If uh, we're calling tension positive up the ramp, then acceleration is positive in that direction as well. Okay. Again, you'll have two unknowns, tension and um, the mass of block two, but you have two equations, one for block M2, one for block M1. You can substitute to solve for the unknown, in this case, M2. Okay, I'll go over this in more detail after you have a chance to work on it a little bit. Let me go back here and we'll look at another one. Shoot, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry about that. Um, let's go to... Um, these kind of problems are interesting because the person puts a cup of coffee on the roof of the car while she um, pulls away. So in this case, you've actually got a situation where friction is the cause of something moving. If this is the roof of the car, I'm not going to draw the whole car, and this is the cup of coffee, let's say the car is accelerating in this direction. Well, the thing that keeps the coffee uh, moving in that direction, that's the acceleration. Sorry, I keep forgetting to label it. Um, the thing that keeps the coffee moving in that direction is the fact that there's friction between the roof of the car and the coffee. So um, if there was no friction as the car underneath the coffee took off to the left, the coffee would just stay in place because the coffee's at rest, it wants to stay at rest, it has inertia. But because there's friction, the friction force is actually going to pull the, um, I'll say it's the roof on the coffee. It's going to pull the coffee in that direction. So the unbalanced force is in this direction. It's because of friction. You've got um, acceleration in that direction as well. Okay. Oops. Um, let's talk about this pulley problem a little bit. Um, you've got one where the pulley's moving at constant speed. You've got one in the next uh, problem where the pulley is moving. Uh, it's accelerating. And what you want to do, because um, you've got the rope is kind of um, winding through here, all a pulley does is change the direction of the force. It doesn't um, use up any force. You know, it's not taking up any of the tension in the rope because they're considered massless and frictionless, so they rotate freely and, and it doesn't take any force to get them to start rotating. So they just transfer the force from one direction to another. But when you put pulleys in... Um, series like this. It can actually provide what's called a mechanical advantage, which means this guy doesn't have to pull so hard to lift that uh, crate up. And uh, we'll start with the one that's moving at constant speed. Um, we're trying to find his force that he's pulling on this with. And the only thing we really know, other than the fact that he's, oops, this is the one where it's uh, moving at an acceleration. I want to start with the one that's at constant speed. Um, all we know is that this is a 52 kilogram um, crate. So we can figure out what the weight of the crate is. So we know if it's moving at constant speed, we know exactly what the tension in this um, chain is right here. It's got to be 52 times the uh, force of the, the uh, strength of the gravitational field, 10 newtons per kilogram, or 520 newtons pulling straight down. Well, if I draw a force diagram with this little pulley here, that's the right way to approach a problem like this. If this is my pulley, it's got the chain going down. It's got two sides of the rope going up. So my force diagram kind of looks like this. Oops. Didn't need to get rid of all those. I've got one side of the rope that way. I've got one side of the rope this way. And I've got my um, 520 newtons going this way. It's not too hard to figure out what the tension in the rope is, considering you know this is the same rope, the tension is constant all the way through, and this downward force, since this is moving at constant velocity, that tells you what these two upward forces have to be. Okay. The only difference between this problem and the next one is there's an acceleration involved Oops. in the subsequent problem right here. So you have to consider um, that the forces aren't in balance and that the tension in this chain may not be exactly what um, the weight of this crate is because the crate's accelerating upward. 
So uh, I think I gave you a good start on the last one. So um, I'm hoping you'll be able to solve this one. Again, draw a force diagram of the pulley itself and uh, consider you've got one force going down and you've got uh, two forces going up that are both the tension in the rope. And then you can kind of work your way around to um, this pulley right here uh, and uh, solve it that way. Okay, good luck.